On October 9, 2018, former Secretary of State Hillary Rodham Clinton made the following statement during a CNN interview. You cannot be civil with a political party that wants to destroy what you stand for, what you care about. That's what I believe, if we are fortunate enough to win back the House and or the Senate, that's when civility can start again. But until then, the only thing that the Republicans seem to recognize and respect is strength. Really? Really, Madam Former Secretary? Is that your position? Well, then allow me to retort. When our society discusses issues politely, with each side seeking a peaceful resolution, everyone benefits. When the discussion is a highly polarized shouting match between people who just don't listen to each other, well, it's time for some roasted opinions. When I told my brother about this quote, he answered that Clinton was attempting to motivate the base voters before the midterm elections. He's right. Of course, when politicians try to motivate the base, they sometimes motivate the base voters of both parties, and sometimes they only motivate the other party's base voters. Based on the responses I've already seen, this instance is at least the former and possibly the latter. Maybe I should thank her, as a registered Republican and a populist, for the damage that she just keeps doing over and over again to the Democrat Party's chances in the upcoming elections. Um, no. Just, no. I'm not going to thank her for this. There's another person, a leader of another party, who advocated for a lack of civility and encouraged activism even when it turned violent. That person encouraged civil unrest so that they could use it to demand further changes to the government until that party, until their party, held power. That party then enacted what rapidly became one-party rule, dismantling the former government in favor of a dictatorship. Does this sound familiar, Mrs. Clinton? The time was the 1930s, and the place was Germany. Or was it 1917 in Russia? I confuse the two. Civility is the hallmark of a functioning constitutional democratically elected republic. Whatever our differences, we can resolve them by having serious discussions which voice the positions of all parties concerned, while the solution arrived at by the consensus of the body politic is usually not universally popular, it is nevertheless normally accepted as the best solution available given the differences of personal beliefs party platforms, and vested interests. Wouldn't you agree, Madam Former Secretary? When civility fails, governing by consensus goes by the wayside. Eventually, enough people become so fed up with the failure of their representative bodies to govern the nation that they cast off the system. Or they attempt to do so, at least. We have lived through this in America once already. The Civil War represented the ultimate failure of the American system. Instead of addressing the issue and coming to a permanent solution peacefully, the country fractured. The 11 states of the Confederacy abandoned the United States and took up armed resistance to the Union forces sent to restore order and preserve the nation. This should ring a bell for you, Madam Former Secretary, as you lived for years in Arkansas. It took four years to restore these rebellious states to the Union. During those four years, at least 785,000 people died. There isn't academic consensus on this figure, and some estimates exceed 1 million dead. That's just the people who died, Madam Former Secretary. Hundreds of thousands more were wounded, and still more hundreds of thousands went missing and were never found. Many of them may have just fled the conflict into anonymity but at least as many went missing simply because there wasn't enough left of them to identify after the fire swept through the wilderness at Chancellorsville, or after the mine exploded at Petersburg and blasted out the crater, or after the formations numbering in the thousands marched straight into massed cannon and rifle fire like they did on so many different battlefields. This was an expensive way to settle a political dispute, Mrs. Clinton. 
Civil wars are bloody affairs. The Second Yemeni Civil War, which has raged since 2015, has killed tens of thousands, possibly more than a 100,000, including as many as 50,000 children who simply starved to death, and is still ongoing. The Second Libyan Civil War broke out in 2014 and has killed at least 10,000 people so far and is still ongoing. We have no idea how many people have died in the Central African Republic Civil War, although we know that they number in the thousands and that it is still ongoing. The Syrian Civil War has killed around half a million people and is still ongoing. The Waziristan War in northern Pakistan has ended over 60,000 lives and is still ongoing. Sudan, not to be outdone, has three civil wars which have collectively slain over 300,000, with at least two of these wars still ongoing. The Somali civil war has been raging since 1988, has killed as many as half a million, and is still ongoing. The Kurds have been trying to establish a separate state of Kurdistan in response to Turkish oppression, a conflict which has claimed 50,000 or more lives, and it is still ongoing. Afghanistan has been consumed by civil war ever since 1978. As many as 2 million have died as a result in a series of wars which are still ongoing. Although it's less bloody, the Colombian War has lasted for a decade and a half longer than the Afghanistan Civil War, killing over 200,000 and is still ongoing. The western half of New Guinea has rebelled against the government of Indonesia since 1962 killing as many as 400,000 in a war which is still ongoing. Last but not least is the civil war in Myanmar, which has killed as many as a quarter million people over the last 60 freaking years, and is still ongoing. Shouldn't you know this, Madam Former Secretary of State? Shouldn't you know that currently ongoing civil wars have killed as many as four and a quarter million people? Shouldn't you know that this is only the current civil wars which are still ongoing? Care to guess how many millions more have died in civil wars which have ended? Maybe you can keep all of those facts in mind before you... Actually, never mind. You wouldn't know the truth if it bit you. I'm sure that you consider the truth so anathematic that you would never agree to a polygraph. For that matter, if you did, I'm sure that as soon as you were hooked up, the needles on the machine would scratch out, Aw, oh, come on, man, have a hot. I have a wife and three blood pressure cuffs to support at home. Nah, I'm not wasting my time trying to convince you to think before you open your mouth anymore. Instead, I'm talking to all of the people out there who think that Hillary Clinton has a valid point. The people who are engaging in activism, agitating against conservatives, aggravating government officials in public spaces, and even joining Antifa. Think, people. Think. Do you believe that a lack of civility will change anything? Are you working to dispel fear, or are you creating it by rioting? Is your resistance to the president bringing him down, or is it bringing the country down? Do you really want the resistance to turn into a rebellion? People are talking about a cultural civil war. Read up on the antebellum years in our own history, when there was another steadily intensifying culture war and think about what a lack of civility and hyperbolic, patently false rhetoric brought America in the past. Trust me on this, people. We don't want to abandon civility. Civil discourse is the best way to resolve our differences. Did the president do something with which you don't agree? Okay. Why don't you agree with what he did? Have you discussed this with people who agree with what he did, to try to understand their point of view? Are you willing to try to explain your point of view to them? Have you thought that perhaps a calmer approach might be greeted with honesty and acceptance, even welcomed by those whom you may be tempted to call fascists? Maybe you will find that you have more in common than you think with them. You might even discover that your concerns aren't so different from theirs. Maybe you will figure out together a solution which both of you can accept. Instead of being woke, be invested. It's our country. It belongs to Americans, all 328 million of us. So since we all own it collectively, let's discuss how to best resolve America's problems, and along the way we might actually resolve our differences. And as for you, Madam Former Presidential Nominee, Madam Former Secretary of State, Madam Former Senator, 
Madam Former First Lady. Phew, you have a lot of former titles. I was content to let you keep on with the sour grapes about your inability to close the deal on the Oval Office, although with all your experience you should have been able to beat a businessman with not one minute of public service whatsoever. I'm not content with that anymore. You need to retire. I don't expect you to do it gracefully, not after over a year, but you shouldn't wait any longer. Retire. Now. Go enjoy some time out of the public eye. Play with your grandchild, accept that you lost, and move on. Move on? Hey, that's catchy. Someone should create an organization with that name. Now that's just my opinion. Comment below to share yours. If you like this video, check out my playlists. Take a look at these channels I have subscribed for more great content. New episodes are coming, so subscribe and ring the bell. 